The Thieves Guild by Jake Kerr. Episode 48. Escape. Two weeks after bathing in front of Dala, Mela and the guard were sitting cross-legged in front of each other, discussing a future that seemed impossible for either of them. They were roughly the same age, were both in male-dominated guild roles and had no one else to talk to. Camaraderie came easily. The thing is, even if I am promoted, I'll never be transferred outside the mines. The captain is a good man but he sees transfers to the city as a betrayal. We are all part of an important regiment in his eyes. But what is there to defend? There is only one way into the mines. The frustration dripped from every one of Dala's words. Mela truly felt sympathetic. She couldn't even comprehend living underground for the rest of her life. To make matters worse for Dala, Mela's perception of Dala was correct. The young guard preferred women and would never find a partner as long as she was a guild guard. Mela knew the feeling well enough. She was so focused on her duties to the guild that she had ignored and suppressed any romantic feelings. But when they broke through her carefully crafted emotional defenses, it was always the tilt of a barmaid's chin or the curves of the women swimming at the river that did it. The boys and men never registered as more than what they were. While Mela felt sad for Dala, her primary goal was to escape, and she had already settled on a plan. Dala flirted with Mela in a way that was clearly meant to be subtle, but was far from it. Mela had planned on returning her affection to get close enough to knock Dala unconscious, lock her in the prison, and then escape. It didn't take long, and she was close enough to do that. The only trouble was that Dala was clearly a skilled guard. Mela would need to do more than just jump on her and hope to strangle her or knock her down. She needed to find some way to either have Dala lead her out of the cell or to knock her unconscious. Perhaps there is danger from underground, Mela replied. She didn't exactly know what kind of danger that could be, but it was the only thing that made sense. Dala was right. Why have a full complement of guild guards spread through the mines? when the entrance was a single tunnel that could be well defended with a squad. Dala took her helmet off and placed it beside her. There are rumours of ghosts from beyond the South Tunnel, but that tunnel is blocked by massive boulders after a cave-in centuries ago. The only passage is a side tunnel that can only fit a single person at a time. Besides, it's so treacherous that it isn't even guarded. Seeing her opening, Mela reached forward and touched Dala's knee. Can I try on your helmet? It's been so long and you will be able to see what you like as a guard. Mela smiled as she rubbed Dala's knee. Dala gave Mela a suspicious look. You miss wearing a helmet? That is an odd thing to say. That's easy for you to say. You're not the one locked up in a prison. Mela lowered her head. I used to wear a helmet. It's part of my past life, a life that is now dead to me. Can you not see how I would find that comforting? Mela hoped that Dala believed her. She looked up, and Dala had tears in her eyes. I'm so sorry. This must be horrible. I know you do not deserve to be here. She handed Mela her helmet. Thank you. Mela said as she took the helmet and put it on. How do I look? Like a beautiful warrior. Dala replied, but as soon as she said the words, she lowered her head and blushed. Mela removed the helmet and looked at it. As she spoke, she clutched the edge in her right hand and tensed her legs. I am sure I don't look nearly as beautiful in it as you do. Dala kept glancing at Mela. The only thing is that it covers your lips. Mela leaned forward, leading with her mouth. Dala's eyes went wide. Her hands fell to her side and she stared at Mela, looking part thrilled and part terrified. Dala closed her eyes as Mela's lips approached hers. At that moment... Mela brought the helmet around and slammed it against the side of Dala's head. She went sprawling to Mela's left. Mela scrambled to her knees and crawled over, the helmet raised for another blow. Dala didn't move as a small trickle of blood dripped down her left cheek. 
I'm so sorry. Mela whispered as she reached into the pouch that contained the key to the cell. Key in hand, she stood up and grabbed Dala's sword. She had exited the cell and went to lock it to make sure Dala couldn't follow her when a weak voice broke the silence. Please, take me with you. Mela paused, torn with indecision. Dala's voice was so sad, so weak, and so full of pain. I can't. Mela whispered. There was a rustling and Dala struggled to a sitting position, holding her head. I can help you. We will escape together. Please, I will do anything. Mela knew that Dala was being sincere, but that sincerity also scared her. Dala was enamored with her. How would she react when they escaped and Mela told her to go off on her own? To make matters worse, Mela had to admit that she found Dala attractive in ways that would make it difficult to part the longer they were together. But ultimately, she had a job to do. Mela had dealt with the anger of spurned suitors enough from the boys in the flats. She knew how it could go. As Mela turned to leave, Dala stumbled forward. They will leave me in this cell to rot for allowing you to escape. That didn't make Mela pause, but the next comment did. I deserve it for foolishly trusting you. Mela unlocked the cell, put her arm around Dala, and supported her as they slowly made their way down the stone tunnel.